I came here as a graduate student. It was about 1968, and uh, everybody said, you have to see the glass flowers. And I have to admit that I thought, what, what do they mean, the glass flowers? And of course, my reaction is what everybody's reaction is. Uh, they can't be glass. We think of glass as shiny, smooth, and if one looks at the models, the leaves are wonderfully realistic. The colors are vivid and accurate. The maple, for example, it's like being out in the forest in the fall. Around here, the sugar maple is colored up. My name is Leslie Fleming. I'm a glass sculptor, working with many of the same techniques as the Blaschkas used. So I use rods of colored glass, which are about the thickness of a pencil, and I melt these over a torch that burns oxygen and propane, and this makes a flame of about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And the tools I use to manipulate the glass are simple and not much different than what the Blaschkas use, basically a cheese knife, tweezers, a poker, and mashers similar to what you'd use at a barbecue grill. Leopold and Rudolph Blaschka's glasswork is absolutely phenomenal. There's no one alive today that can touch their skill level. They lived in a time where people had to make their own things or repair their own things. And one of their primary advantages was this lineage of artistic and craftsmanship knowledge that each of them grew up with. One of our guiding principles with the renovation is that we always wanted to keep the character and the integrity and the aesthetics of the exhibit. We're making some really necessary updates to make the space better for our visitors and for the collection itself. It's going to be more open. It's going to have a better flow for our visitors. And people are going to see a lot of old favorite models and some new models that haven't been on exhibit for quite some time. When the cases are first brought into the shop, the first thing we have to do is disassemble them. Some look bright red, some look brown, some look very pale yellow. We made them all uniform after we stained it with a water-based aniline dye, which is actually the same process they would have used 100 years ago. We then sealed it with a clear shellac sealer and toned them, put a uh, pigment glaze, and then we finished them with a uh, satin sheen uh, lacquer. So we had to remove all the old glass, which is here, which was 5 16 inch thick plate glass. Christopher had to measure it all, we had to make a list, we had to send for the uh, non-leaded safety glass, something that won't, would not shatter, and this also will uh, show the colors in the flowers true as they could be. So we put a bed of glaze down, we set the glass in, we replaced uh, these wooden doors with these doors which are handmade. When they were being deconstructed, I might have mentioned that we found the signatures of four of the original case makers. We are going to mill down and uh, reinstall. So when the doors are opened, you'll be able to see uh, the signatures and uh, they will continue to live on. <laughs> You've done all this work for nine months and then uh, it still looks terrible until you clean all the little fine residue off. The legs went in separately, the tops then go in, and then we uh, reconnect them on site. We carried them out the first couple of times, but uh, that was enough of that. Uh, <laughs> This lab is brand new. It's only been in operation since October 2015. The room is also serving as storage for most of the collection of glass flowers. The surfaces of most of, or if not all of these models, is affected by uh, the slow deposition of dirt and dust over time. But also, there's soils and oily dirt from soot from the days when coal was used heating the building. So I use a solvent that um, actually affects the, um, the soot and the dirt and picks it up, but leaves anything that's water soluble alone. And one of the problems with the uh, earlier glass models is that they were coated with an organic coating that allowed the models to be painted. When that coating uh, dried up and shrank away from the glass, we would get edge peeling. And each of these details in this uh, transverse section of the ovary are glued down with animal glue. Um, this one looks it's even disrupted. Yep, this one has already broken up and it's, uh, it needs to be consolidated. So this is a very serious problem that um, we're trying to solve here in conservation.
I think when people went into the old gallery, because of the way that exhibit was mounted, it was large, it was complicated, it was hard to interpret. So I think people went away with some understanding, perhaps, of certain plants and their anatomy, but not any kind of unified view. And I think what we're hoping for now, uh, that people will come in, they'll have a sense that there is a classification for those plants that we're following. And we're hoping that they'll uh, walk away with a little bit of knowledge about how a flower is built, for example. So it really expands the way that we can present these both as objects of art, but also ways of understanding the organisms.